so thanks to Expansive Worlds, we have an opportunity to take a bit of an early look at the Bloodhounds, which are going to be released on March 30th on all platforms, and I know this is something that a ton of people have been excited about, myself included. So we're going to head in here and get a Bloodhound straight away, and I want to show the whole process just since that's like a common question with new features, just how to do it. So we go into the Weapon Locker, we'll go into the Kennel, and I've looked at all of the different possible coats, and I like the Black and Tan full coat the most. The first one is free, you actually don't have to pay anything for that, and then I think the next one is 45,000 in-game cash. We'll go to buy that and we'll name him. I'm just going to name him after my old real-life dog, Rocky. Once we do that, we can set him as active. And once we've done that, we can actually see his little icon on the Hunter Mate. We have Rocky the Bloodhound just out here idling. And we can open the command wheel with B. We can have him do different things, I think we'll just have him sit for now. He's going to be kind of in the side of the lodge, unfortunately. but. I think there's other things you can do when they're actually sitting. So yeah, we can pet or play with them, so let's just do that. Apparently that does something... Maybe it makes them more attentive, or it increases its, his attention, something like that, because it does show that attentive skill. And we'll pet him as well before we head off anywhere. It's cool they have these animations, and they're actually, like, really in-depth. They're not just, like, a simple petting animation, so that's cool. And it does show, like, he's sitting or whatever he's doing, so... Can we have him follow us? I'm not sure if any of those are actually necessary, he might just do it. Apparently we can just praise him as well, I'm not sure if that does anything, but what I want to see is exactly how good they can track animals, and I thought Yukon Valley would be a good map to do that on. There are bison which should run pretty far from any kind of decent lung hit, and eventually I want to see what they do with wolves, so we're going to head off towards the swamp, we'll see if we can maybe get like a caribou or something on the way just to kind of test that, but I'm curious how they're going to do, and now that we're farther away, I think it does just happen automatically. Because we went to that healing state without doing anything, but now he's just going to come along with us. And like I said, hopefully it is caribou drink time. We can just find something to just sort of see how he can do and get a sense of it. And then we can maybe take on the more difficult task of tracking a bison. So there's a couple of things that have been changed. You can see the text on like the label of the animal and its health and score submit are all bigger, which I think is a good thing. But we have the 303. And I think it might be best to take like a 300 meter shot, because caribou from the 303 don't tend to run very far. And we'll try to make sure we avoid a hard shot, just so he actually does run and we can see a bit of the tracking from the bloodhounds. So let's go for that. Didn't drop him, so that's exactly what we want, and he is going down. So it should be a fairly easy track. I just want to see how that's going to go. So we're going to mark, whenever the hunting pressure comes up, right in the center. That should be where the first blood is, and we'll sort of see what he can do. So if we ID this blood track here, and then we open the menu and have him track, I want to see exactly how he's going to do that. So he's already leveled up in the tracking skill, and I'm just curious how long it's going to take him to go from track to track, and if he's going to do a lot of back and forth, because there are a lot of other tracks in the area. I don't know if that will mess with him at all, but as of now, we can see just the next blood track ahead. He's just going right along. You can see the caribou down as well. So at least an easy track like this, it looks like he's just going straight to the caribou and having no issues whatsoever. And I'm curious if that's going to be the norm or if it's just because this was an easier track. But what does he do? Does he bark or anything when he finds it? I'm not sure if he's technically found it yet. It says tracking blood as far as his state. So maybe he's gotten a little confused. There we go. So he did find it. Cool. Can we do anything then as soon as he finds it? Because there's a phrase... Apparently it's just like a whistle that I guess he knows means he's done well. But that's actually pretty neat. I like that so far. And then once we claim him, does he just stop barking? Looks like he does. Nice. Alright, well we got this an easier track. This bear is not too pleased with us, but I think we're going to go straight into the swamp area and see what a bison track looks like. Because if we make a single long shot, even with like the 300... It should run kind of far, and we might even try the 7 mil just to kind of extend that tracking distance. Just to sort of test the boundaries. That should be a pretty good size level 4 Plains Bison. He's actually alert out there. The wind's not that great. He's actually going to go aggressive, so not what we wanted necessarily. I'm curious if he's going to get over here in time, because he's trying to go around that way. So we may still get to have the dog track him. I was curious if the dog would do anything with an aggressive bison, but it's just going to end up dying before it really gets that close to us. And I don't even think if we ran around, it would get there in time, so we'll just set him off on the track and see how he does. 
And I do have to say, from the time we spent running around and basically trying to find a bison, I like how the dog pretty much just does its own thing and you don't have to worry too much about it. Because I feel like that's something that nobody wants is to have to like kind of babysit their dog as they're hunting. And he sort of just does his own thing. When you get to a certain distance, the uh, player automatically has the dog come to him. And I think that's a really smart thing that you don't have to do it manually. And that kind of thing I think makes them a little more useful and a little less of a pain to bring around. Because in Classic, I don't bring my dogs with me very often, it's because I do feel like in a lot of ways I have to kind of babysit them and make sure they're not going to spook my animals and stuff. So far in Call of the Wild, that is not so much an issue, and I really do enjoy just having them along for the ride, but one thing we're going to try after we've kind of tested some of this tracking stuff, and hopefully after we see some aggressive wolf behavior and what the dog does with that, I do want to try bow hunting and calling animals in just to see if the dog has any effect on them whatsoever and like if we do have to worry about making sure the dog is laying in brush or anything like that but we can see so far i mean this is like a level one or two dog i actually don't know what level he is but he's just following the tracks no problem this is a low bleed rate like it's not like we made what would be considered a great shot with at least an ideal caliber just running straight to our bison let's see if it takes him as long to start barking again it might just be that they find the animal and sit there and look around for a while. But last time with the caribou, it took him a while before he started barking. There we go. Alright, nice. So, I assume praising him does something. You would think there's a reason that's there. But, 192 scoring gold bison. Pretty cool so far. They don't seem to have much of an issue tracking at all, and I really wonder if we ever get to a situation where there's not as many visible tracks on the ground, if that's going to be a time where the dogs actually struggle. And I'm not sure that we can easily put ourselves into a situation where that's going to happen. It's actually kind of a decent level 4 caribou, so we may just try to get that real quick. Not a hard shot, so we'll get to track him a little bit. But yeah, if there's, say like a herd of wildebeest or something, where any individual wildebeest doesn't leave a ton of tracks, I'm curious how that's going to go. We may see if we can find one of those situations just to see how the dogs do. But for now, I want to stick with Yukon and go and actually look for wolves for a little while. So I mentioned that you don't really have to do much as far as actually dealing with the dog. It kind of just does its own thing. I feel like this is going to be the only thing. And that's a different symbol for the level up. It looked like the cash symbol. So I'm not sure if that was just a, a weird little bug there. But he got another tracking level up. But anyway, I think the only real thing is going to be, at least early on until your dog levels up some, just kind of any time you make a shot that doesn't drop the animal, having them track it and it's like I said it's not a big deal we could almost just run behind him and he pretty much is finding the animal at the pace that we would I think he's up here already at it kind of doing his thing where he stands around for a minute before he starts barking but he should at any moment now there we go praise him for that I still haven't seen that that does anything necessarily but good to do that I would imagine that was just a silver level four caribou but still barking might have been just timing with that so let's have him play with us for a second. Not sure if that actually does anything at all. It may increase like the bonding or something. There's probably some information on that somewhere, but anyway, that's just something we're gonna do as a good practice, I think. But let's head into the dead forest area and just see if we can get any wolves to attack us and just see if the dog has any interaction with them. Well, that's actually kinda cool. We just have a piebald cow moose feeding out here. And I think this might be our opportunity to kind of test if the dogs spook animals when they get close. So what I want to do is probably set up in these trees here. The wind should be shifting more and more south, so that shouldn't affect us. And I'm not going to have the dog do anything. We're not going to have him sit or stay or anything like that. We'll just let him decide what to do. And I want to see if the moose spooks any earlier than it otherwise would. Because as far as I can tell right now, that would be the only thing where you have to actively kind of control the dog. Because everything else just seems like you kind of hunt around as usual and you just have a bloodhound at the ready if you need him to track anything. So I'm curious to see if this is going to have any impact on like the way you would maybe bow hunt. So I do have the crossbow. We're going to get probably into this tree right in front of us and we'll just see what this does. So I think we're in a pretty good spot here. We can actually see the moose now. And like I said, we're not going to give Rocky any commands. We'll just see if he just sort of sits there or what he does. But the biggest thing is the moose shouldn't really get spooked until it's about 10 meters away, and we'll probably let it get to something like that. Right now, she's just completely calm. No issues having the dog sitting there right in front of her. It could be because he's not moving. I don't really know. But it is a cow moose. Probably not the best test, but the fact that it is piebald, I wanted to at least get her in here and get a shot at her. 
So we'll still test this with like something that's a higher level animal, but pretty good initial sign. Let's get the crossbow ready here. She is still just calm. It's as if there's no dog here whatsoever. And again, we didn't give him any command. We haven't had to do anything. She was alert there, but probably at the range that she would just be noticing us. Not gonna go anywhere. We should have Rocky track her for the sake of kind of leveling up. And by the way, you don't have to actually be on a blood track. Let me go and just pick up a completely different trail. If we go to the command and have him track, he should just search for blood. You can see that at the bottom right there. It says searching for blood. And I think he's going to be able to find it since it's literally right there. And now he's tracking blood. So it's cool you don't have to ID it. And that could be really useful because there's a lot of times where sometimes there's like a footprint right over your blood track or something like that. And I think in those cases, you just can let the dog do his thing and you want it to worry about it. And it's not like she ran that far, but looks like Rocky found our moose. Let's actually praise him. And one thing that we can kind of do that I never considered before up until like right now is try to get like a little picture with Rocky with the moose. So if we have him heal and then if we can get him to like sit right near it there, let's go to sit. Actually, that's going to be kind of perfect. I wish there wasn't the brush there, but he looks at us, which is kind of perfect for getting this kind of picture. Really wish that brush wasn't there because that would be really, really neat, but Let's just kind of play around with this a little bit. I want to get like a really good picture of it since we did get a rare. So we'll get something set up. I mean, all things considered, that's not too bad. I wish we were a little more facing the light, but there's only so much we can do without any kind of trophy shot mode. But anyway, got ourselves a piebald moose shot at eight meters. And yeah, that's about the range where they go alert anyway. So again, we'll test this with like some kind of male animal that's a higher level. But immediately there, was that just an automatic thing where we had him lie down? That was interesting, but yeah, first impressions of that, it seems like the dog has zero effect on the animals around you, which again, in my opinion, is a really good thing. You don't want to have to like babysit your dog, you just want to be able to hunt and have him there. And so far, I think the devs did a great job of like basically capturing exactly that. And I want to, okay, we just had the healing thing automatically. I wanted to show that, that it does actually have him follow you without doing anything actively. And again, that comes back to the same thing. We can just do our thing and we basically have a bloodhound at our side at the ready, which is cool and I like it. I like that we can just have him here and he's smart enough to do his own thing. We don't have to, like I said, babysit him because that I think would be a big negative and so far that's definitely not any part of this. So I must have missed it, but at some point we got to level 5 on the companion status and that basically unlocks a trait point. So we can either unlock loving, which is increasing the overall bond or shortcut, which is your dog can detour tracks in favor of more recent clues. So I just actually realized that if we go into our uh, command wheel, so let's actually unlock the loving trait. Basically, we have three different hearts here. Best friend is the max. I think content is one heart and loving is maybe the second one. That's the one thing that you have to do kind of actively. Apparently we're accidentally having him track blood, so let's not do that. But Maybe having that loving trait would reduce the amount of times you have to do that. Because I'm guessing at least having that maxed out will have him gain like the maximum possible XP. I could be wrong about that, that's just something I'm sort of assuming. But I'm not sure, from what I've seen with the tracking, the shortcut might not be necessary. So hopefully that's going to help us. So finally we have wolves actually coming to attack us, and I'm curious what that's going to do. I think he's barking at them. I want to see if he'll actually do anything. None of them look all that big. It's cool that he is barking at him. There's a seven. Where did he get to? He's kind of just hanging right by our side, which makes sense. I don't know if he's going to do much else. He's kind of avoiding them. Let's uh try to make sure we don't get run over. He's kind of just chilling, so maybe there's not going to be much interaction there. It's hard to hear, though, too, <laughs> because of the, the wolves. I mean, they're going to flee. The question is, did Rocky have anything to do with that? It's hard to say, but there wasn't much going on there. Other than the barking, which maybe could warn you. Oh. There was a little something there. We couldn't really hear it because of the wolves. I bet he was doing it the entire time. He's still doing it. There's no state in the bottom right. It still says he's idling, but he's definitely kind of growling. Maybe that is why they left then. 
That could have something to do with him leaving. It also could be because we shot the biggest male in there. That's kind of cool, though. It's definitely something to pay attention to in the future. Now, it also might be the reason he's still growling is because they're literally right up there. But I'm glad there's actually something he does, because that's the first time he's done that in the last hour and a half that I've been with him. It has to be because of the wolves. There's no way that's just a random coincidence. But yeah, definitely, as we continue to uh, hunt around and see like what else the bloodhounds are capable of, that's something to watch for, to see if the wolves are more likely to flee because we have them there. Now, that's not always necessarily a good thing. A lot of times, we're trying to get wolf respawns, and when they attack, that's the best time to get them to. But they still hung around a while. It was kind of just waiting, and uh, eventually they did flee. But that was cool to hear him, like, growling at them. I don't imagine that's going to make diamond, but a level 5 caribou might be a good one to call in and test and see if that spooks from the dog being close. So we'll do the same thing. We'll get hidden here in this tree, and we're just not going to give Rocky any commands whatsoever, and we'll just let him just do whatever he wants to do. And hopefully the caribou's going to come in, because they are traveling right now, which sometimes makes them not want to come in. But it looks like he's going to. I wonder if it is the dog making him go alert? I almost gotta think it would be. He's still within bow range. We'll go ahead and take him with the crossbow, and that one Rocky's not gonna be able to track. But I don't see any other reason he should have been alert there at 30 meters. Like, there's no wolves in this area. And we were completely hidden in the wind's fine. So maybe they do have a little bit of an impact on, like, some of the larger animals. That's gonna be something that we'll have to learn as we go on. And of course, he is almost 30 below diamond, so... Not going to be anywhere close, but good to see that's something to actually watch out for. And at least the way that I tend to play the game, I don't think that's going to have much of an impact because usually I'm not calling animals in that close. But it's good to know that's something to potentially keep an eye on. But anyway, we're going to head back to the trophy lodge, I think. Not because of anything we actually shot today, but because I think we can see the dog in there. So Rocky's kind of just over here sleeping in the corner. Got his food and water and everything. Can we do anything? Oh, he actually wakes up when we get close. I don't have any uh, command wheel coming up. Is that a thing? Is he going to sleep when we're far away and then wake up when we get close? I think that's a thing. That's such a cool little like detail to add that he actually wakes up when we get close. I wish we could pet him in the bed, but I like that they keep them in the trophy lodge. And that's a good spot for it too. It's like right going into the main room. I like that. And you can really see it. Just everything that's gone into like... Just the dogs in general, the detail and everything. You can see the thought that the devs have put in, and it really does show, but even like a little bit of food and water in the bowls. It's really, really cool, and I'm looking forward to continuing to learn about these guys and getting to see more of these animations, because they're really well done. But yeah, uh, actually, we are going to be streaming with these guys over on Twitch probably right now. We're going to start the stream a little earlier just for the Bloodhounds being in early access right now, but I'm really impressed. I really felt like they might be a bit of a hindrance when we're hunting, but I didn't feel like they were at all. And there's a lot of benefit we got out of actually having them with us and being able to track stuff down. So looking forward to seeing more of that and looking forward to hopefully seeing some of you guys in the stream over on Twitch. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.